looks like Twitter might be messed up again. That's Twitter's not... really weird. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Great. Good stuff from Elon. He's done nothing but you know ruin the platform for the most part. Uh, Alana Basketball Podcast, episode 213, uh, April 15th, 2024. My mic is lower. I don't want it to be. All right. We're good. Uh, April. It is April, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. We did an episode not that long ago. These are close together off-season podcasts. Yeah, just this is supposed what, to be the... this is supposed to be downtime. Don't, yeah, don't, doesn't Brad and company know that? Stop making moves and losing coaches. All right. This is the second or third year in a row. I would say that we have to do a lot more in April because of the portal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, four days between episodes for the last two. We've done three in the last. Uh, eight days so there you go after you know being eliminated we're obviously doing a bunch in march um we have episode 213 uh lot of news in the uh, illini basketball world i would say in terms of you know players coming in players coming out a certain assistant coach you know uh which by the way if 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 i didn't schedule this yesterday and do everything with the with the thumbnail and the title and stuff i probably would have put sincere harris in the title um, but maybe I'll put them in the podcast episode title rather than the YouTube title, but, uh, that shouldn't matter to too many people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if anybody, yeah, Twitter is definitely broken. Maybe they fixed their thing because we got zero viewers on Twitter, uh, <laughs> which is great. Cause it was, it was terrible anyway. Um, I didn't want those Twitter people anyways. No, very few actually ever replied. So. <laughs> Uh, they were just kind of, you know, nobody was actually stopping to watch is, is the point that I'm trying to make there. Uh, first thing here today is uh, if you if people stock our Twitter bio and and our YouTube stuff, and if you look at the top right of the uh, of the stream today, uh, we are no longer with Armchair Illini. Uh, this was a decision that we made. We felt, you know, there's there's several reasons why this happened. I don't really feel the feel the need to to speak on it publicly unless you know you never know. Shidewinder is on Twitter. That's great. Thanks, uh, he's a YouTube slash Twitter guy. I guess I forgot. It's like him and that other guy are the only ones that ever reply on on Twitter. Um, but no, I feel like you know there's some things that you know we we thought that maybe we'd be better going on our own again which we which we were on our own for for you know four years so i don't know yeah. what do you think i i mean it was it was fine and there was no there's no bad blood between us and armchair uh just wasn't i don't think it was beneficial to either side so uh, we decided to to cut ties so we don't have to awkwardly announce that we're part of them at the beginning of every podcast or forget to announce that we are so um, yeah, we're just going to be doing our own thing. Like we always have been. I mean, we even, we did our own thing with armchair, but, uh, just, no, just time to move like, away from it. It was, so. there's, there's like, there's, uh, certain, like the locked on podcasts, like those podcasts, like they are, I've heard that the locked on people are like demanding of what, like the episodes have to be this, they have to be that, like armchair never did. No, any of that with us, um, no. which we, I just I just think that we did it on our own for four years, and I wouldn't say it wasn't beneficial at all for either side. I think there was some benefits for both sides, but I feel like it wasn't enough to where we would just be like, okay, yeah, we're we're this is you know we can't walk away from this, but uh, yeah, I think I think it's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take shots. People people probably think that I would take shots. I'm not gonna do that. We don't need to, we don't need that unless. Shots are taken growing up. My way. What's going on? No, well, I I usually Got don't a haircut think... growing up. Still calling people don't... morons on Twitter, though. Well, so. that guy is such a loser. We'll get to that. Um, yeah, I, I think that you know, if you look at armchairs, if you if you look at what they're doing now, I think you could get an idea of what what our thoughts are. But um, either way, yeah, uh, we kind of just decided this last week, and we're like, you know what? Actually, it was actually after the last episode. Is when we yeah, that was the actual show. decision, but yeah. we talked about it for a few weeks, and I think that they knew that. But either way, I uh, wish them well. Um, yeah, which is exactly what you say in these situations, right? Yeah, I'm sure they wish us well too, because you know, I got a sounds good back from never mind. 
Anyways, what's going on in Illinois basketball? Yikes, this guy <laughs> taking shots. No, it's all right. I mean, look, if they want to, if they want to, that was the response I got. I'm, I can show you the message. Yeah, got it. Sounds good. So yeah, I, I don't. I feel like you know, you're gonna we move on. You're, you're trying to make me okay. I won't. Um, we move on. You got to pick sides sometimes. Anyway, uh, Kylan Boswell coming to yeah. Illinois. How about that? Uh, I think we all knew this was going to happen. I think the only way it didn't happen would have been the uh, the thing where teams come in out of nowhere and and steal a player from somebody, but that didn't really happen here. It felt like it was going to be a line eye from the start, which makes sense given his recruiting out of high school. Uh, yeah. Illinois losing out on him to Arizona. Uh, he reclassed. He was a four-star point guard coming out, one of the better point guards in the class despite being 17 years old. Um, at the time, and I'd be curious to see how having a, a real point guard is going to change Underwood's philosophy and offensive approach after a season where they clearly didn't have like a real true point guard, and it was talked about yeah, so much all the time. Yeah, and all there was. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like, I mean, they got to the Elite Eight without a real one, so I feel like it, it was talked about. One specific person in the media I can think of that literally constantly brought it up. And said that that was, you know, ceiling altering for them, which I don't think ended up being the case because I think if Illinois had a true point guard, they still would have lost to UConn in the Elite Eight. So yeah, I don't think that would have mattered much. I gotta put a hat on. This this hair is <laughs> I had it I had it gelled up last time. Yeah. Was backwards hat look better? I'm still young enough. I'm still Probably. young and hip. Yeah, you can still pull that off. No, it looks stupid. <laughs> This looks dumb too. All right, no, this. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Kylan Boswell. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it would be interesting. Uh, true point guard. Uh, Illinois hasn't had that. I think it moves Ty into a better situation where you know he's not the point guard. I know that he ended the year not really as the point guard, but uh, to see what Illinois' offense is, I mean, Kylan's a a big body guy. I don't know if they're going to try to booty ball with him. He's a little too small. He's not. Six six like the mask, but um, it's exciting. I, I I think he's so young that he could have that leap that you know most kids get after you know their sophomore year. So I think his birthday's this week. So happy birthday to him, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if he can turn himself into an NBA prospect at Illinois, and I I, I think it would maybe take two years to do that. Yeah, um, but. It'll be interesting. I mean, you look at you look at the uh, the numbers. He had some some shooting spells that weren't great, but still shot it, you know, pretty well. Uh, I believe in the middle of January he was thirty seven point five percent on mid range dribble jumpers, twenty four attempts, and thirty three point thirty three point three percent on dribble jumpers beyond the arc, thirty six attempts. That's from uh, Sports Illustrated's evaluation uh, quote. Balanced sound footwork, fluid energy transfer, and can get into his dribble jumper quickly out of the pick and roll. So I think Illinois is going to need somebody at the five that can set screens and move and and be maybe not a true five, but something close to that, not a five out. They're definitely not going to do that this year, I wouldn't think. It would be kind of surprising if they were to do that. <laughs> because I don't know if that would be the best spot for Boswell as a player to be managing that type of offense. Yeah. And I mean, in Brad's what Brad has done, I mean, his offense has never really needed a true point guard. So it'll be interesting to see if they start running stuff through a point guard um, to distribute, or if they're going to run the weave into handoffs into what. So I think, I think there's a huge upside here, which is great news. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to look at his team from Oklahoma State, just the numbers there, because okay. I just don't remember the last time Illinois had like a a true point guard that was high level, I would say. Yeah. I don't know if they've had one under Brad when it's mattered. Like, I don't think Frazier was a true point guard. Yeah. He wasn't really a guy who's running the offense and making, you know, decisions and, and passing. Um I mean, Jawan Evans, I don't really remember the tape there, but obviously he was, uh, 
you know, elite in the one year under Brad had 6.4 assists. So I would say that would qualify as a, as a, as a point, true point guard, six foot guard with 6.4 assists per game. So that would be something maybe that people should watch. Go watch Underwood's offense, which is number one in efficiency at Oklahoma State, had Jawan Evans, who is a, an elite point guard at the college level. So that might be something I'd have to do in the next couple of weeks. But, yeah, I think the one of the big things here is that he's still really young. And I think if your decisions in the portal, like how badly you want a point guard or not, I think this was the number one target no matter what. Yeah, like if he was entering the portal, they wanted him badly out of high school, which we've seen that a couple times where players they lose out on in high school, they go after again in the portal, whether they hit or miss. Um, I mean, Shannon, I think, was a guy that they went after out of high school, and obviously he went to Texas Tech, ends up coming here. Probably wasn't going to come here if it weren't for Michigan. If, if we're going to you know, be honest about that, people might want to deny right. that, but I think that's the truth. Uh, I don't think Jawan Howard needs to say it after losing to Illinois for the hundredth time. But um, <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a good get. Like, there's no. I think during this season watching him, I, I talked about him a lot, and I think he was kind of it was a weird fit at Arizona just because of all the guards they had last season in front of him, especially reclassing was kind of weird. Probably mm-hmm. not the right decision. It's usually not the right decision, depending on the player. But uh, he just he kind of struggled down the stretch. He, he had some big game. I mean, I talked about it in the last episode. He had some some good games against good opponents. Like he was pretty good against Alabama um, and and a couple other opponents. So I think we should be excited about this. I, I don't think anybody should be saying, "Oh, uh, the, he's he's too small." I, no, this isn't like getting Trey White. Is that what you're saying? You know what? I think the Trey White thing is interesting just because I listened to Latulip with Werner and I thought he made a good point. And yeah. I thought he basically said Trey White has not had good coaching in, in college and, and the teams he were on he was on, like Louisville's a disaster and and obviously USC, I mean infield, there's a reason he did the shock and smart thing and left before he got fired. Like they got so much talent at USC and only one year they had any sort of success really. And just really underachieving. So I don't think infield's like an elite power conference coach, which is why SMU, I think, is going to be the absolute basement of the ACC for 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 a while. So I'm will I, I've never not been willing to give Trey White a chance. I just think that the role that he's playing on this team is probably not going to be like I don't think he's going to start. Like if he's starting, I think we might have a problem. Yeah, uh, I mean I've I've seen people you know, mark him in as a starter. I don't know if I see that necessarily, but if he's, if he can play defense, then yeah, I'll listen to it, but I just don't know. Right. Right. I also don't know if Ty Rogers can play defense anymore. Like that's a little confusing. <laughs> what we saw from him this year. Yeah, that's true. Let's well, just say this. I think that they're going to miss Shannon's defense in spots next season. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But I mean, say what you will about about uh, their defense last season. I mean, they had Shannon was great at it. So, and he missed some games. But yeah, Boswell, good get. You know, why not? Great get. Great. Uh, put Illinois number one uh, in the portal right now. So, yeah, that's good. very change, early. But, but yeah, <laughs> very but early. Definitely yeah. screenshot it while you can. Yep, absolutely. And then, uh, since you're Harris entering the portal. Uh, I would say this is not, I would say 14, 15 on that one. Yep. I got you. Um, I don't think is anybody. Okay. <laughs> the idea that Sincer Harris was going to leave no matter what I think is insane. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I don't know if he would have necessarily left. I know that Illinois is bringing in more guys and maybe guys ahead of him, but like, I don't, again, with, you know, DGL or Trey white, like I, I think sincere had a spot as of right now where we're at, but I, yeah, I think if Chester's still here, he's here. Chester um, reportedly is going to West Virginia. I haven't seen anything official. I don't think his Twitter's changed. I don't really know what's going on there, but 
Uh, supposedly he's going to West Virginia. Sincere has entered the portal as of today, this morning. So I don't know. I We kind of got into it with old Kilton on Twitter today about Sincere and uh, Kilton basically said that he was only worried about himself and not a team player because he didn't play this last year, which I think is crazy talk. Um, personally, I don't know how you can, can, you know, hate a guy for, am I going to play five minutes a game maybe, or do I make myself better for the team next year? And Kilton said, oh yeah, he's going to transfer six months ago. Great, good prediction, but I don't, I don't know if we were in the spot if Chester doesn't go to West Virginia. So there are a lot of elements of this thing that kind of tell us that it's because Chester's leaving. Like, yeah, everyone's like, oh, that's why you don't believe that somebody's going to stay just because they posted their highlight clips. He posted his highlight clips and put ILL, put ILL in, in it, and <laughs> like if if. If Chester isn't leaving, I really, really don't think Sincere is leaving. And that's fine. I mean, look, let's just let's just combo this and talk about Frazier as well. Chester yeah. Frazier, you know, reportedly leaving West Virginia to join uh, Darian De- DeVries, uh, new head coach. And by the way, Illini fans who thought that he was leaving with the head coaching job, uh, uh, use your brains, okay? <laughs> um, I, I don't think Brad's upset about this because I think if you look at the history here, number one, Okay, Tim Anderson's a far better recruiter. Like, that's no doubt. There's zero doubt about that. Number two, Chester's not there for his X's and O's. Number three, a lot of Chester's recruits have been three-star, four-star guys without a jumper or who don't have a a very good offensive game. Yeah. And I think that is sincere. I think that Hansberry offensively, there's limitations there, especially that size underneath. Like, I don't know how good around the rim – he is like he can shoot three, sure, but were they guarding him on any of those threes? Not really. Um, I also think of you know Jace Butler. I believe was a Chester guy, right? Yep. Uh, I think he probably would have been the first Chester Frazier recruit that you know maybe had a bit more of an offensive game. Unless I'm missing a couple, I'd have to look back. But uh, I, I I find it hard to I, I would not think that Brad was trying too hard to to make sure Chester uh, stayed around. Yeah, and people, you know, will be like, "Why is he leaving his alma mater?" I mean, it, you don't know what's going inside, you know, going on inside with Underwood and Chester, and you know, Chester I, apparently West Virginia is three and a half hours from his home. So, it, the thing Chester did is he brought in recruits from from out of the state of Illinois, and that's, Tim Anderson brings them from the state of Illinois. So Chester, Chester's big three are sincere. Epps and Hansberry. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I mean, Epps, Epps could shoot fine, but I mean, there's, he's small and didn't really, there's a lot, lot left to be desired. He's only a freshman and obviously he's in the portal again. So, what does that yeah. tell you? But, uh, Epps, yeah, I mean, there's a backcourt at West Virginia. It'd be phenomenal. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be great. Uh, sounds like Hansberry's leaving with Chester. Yeah. That's the word. Um, Hansberry sincere. Uh, Ethan, we text when this news came out, and I literally said, "Sincere is gone." And I, probably gone. I was not so, even okay. First of all, the and report, you didn't care. You didn't care. You said, "No, I didn't." Let him go. Who yeah, cares? I. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you don't trust Brad to reload. Go get some older guys, some guys I, that can play offense. I mean, come on. And also, sincere offensively, I thought there was something there. I know people say there wasn't, but I do think there's something there. Uh, if you look at Tim Anderson's recruits that he worked on alone, Sky Clark, we all know is a good player, but obviously there's a lot going on there. Uh, Jeremiah Fears, we'll see. Uh, Ty Rogers, offensively, just really nothing uh, in the way of outside of the the paint. And, uh, and DGL, who I think there's something – there offensively uh those are the big four on the list here so um safe to say that i think tim anderson's probably been more successful as a recruiter at illinois than chester and chester probably getting a, a bit more of an opportunity at west virginia to to do things to where he's recruiting guys 
from the East Coast, and West Virginia is closer than the U of I. And yeah. he's just been getting closer the entire time because he, he's at K State before this. I think it, wasn't he at uh, Virginia Tech? Virginia Tech, yeah. In between K State and Illinois, yeah. Yeah. He didn't so do any he, recruiting there in terms of the solo. He didn't land anybody on his own at, at Virginia Tech. Yeah, but he knows that area well. Um, so I, I think it's a good move for him. People will say that it's not even a lateral move, it's a step down, but I. At this point, I you take what what's offered to you and where you think you can thrive at, and and maybe he didn't think he could thrive here. You know, Brad runs what he wants to run and does his own thing. And Hinkle finally good. makes a good point uh, for the first time in his life. Uh, <laughs> this is the bottom line, though. And I can't believe, I guess I should be able to believe this, but people thinking that it was for the head coach, oh, my God. And then people <laughs> like trying to be like, well, they already hired a head coach. Nice try. Yeah. What what about any of these assistants that Brad has, other than Jeff Alexander, of course, who should have been the West Virginia head coach, for being honest. Uh, what about those guys tell you that they're, they're going to be a head coach, like now? I don't see it right now. Yeah. Um, also, Maybe. Tim Anderson just feels like such a – like an assistant that, that high-level programs and coaches need in terms of the relationships with the players and the recruiting. So um, it'll be interesting to see what Brad does – in replacing Chester, I mean, I know there's some Antigua rumors out there's, there. Which yeah. The chat is blown up with Antigua. I would absolutely sign up for that. You know why? Because Tim Anderson's been really good for the most part, and a lot of his recruits have been guards. You bring in Antigua, a guy who He's can big recruit man. bigs and and develop, help develop them, yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, does he want to follow Cal? It didn't seem like Kentucky got better at all while, while him – when he and, and Chin left for that. And obviously I don't want Chin Coleman back, but I would absolutely take Antigua back. Is that, hasn't it been rumored that Antigua and Coleman are already going to Arkansas? There's apparently their Calipari wants to bring them all over, which that doesn't feel like Arkansas should allow that. <laughs> right. like what they were doing at Kentucky. I mean, yeah. Might want so to change something. You didn't up. think this was good from Hinkle? Ethan buried by X Orange Crush leadership receipts. Hate to see it. That's bait. And also Kilton. I mean, I didn't even bring up the Orange Crush. Everybody knows that it was a total disaster. I mean, that guy sucks. <laughs> he just does. What do you want me to say? I can't he believe that sucks. he can still see our. I can't believe he didn't block you by now. Honestly, give him credit on that. Give him credit. Yeah. Uh, Antigua gets the international guys. I think uh, that's Jeff Alexander, though. He can't come take Jeff's job. What's he gonna do? Jeff's yeah. gotta travel. Uh, Chester was avoiding some bridges being burnt behind him on the East Coast. I don't know what's going on with Chester. I just know he's gone, supposedly. <laughs> so he's gone. So Illinois is gonna have. Four open spots after Hansberry leaves. That, would you like to hear some of the Orlando? names that would you like to hear some of the names that Orlando Antigua has recruited in his career as an assistant? Yes. Uh Nerlens Noel, Kentucky. Aaron Bradshaw, who's going to Ohio State. Yeah, he was a five star. Uh Carl Anthony Towns, five star. Terrence Jones, five star. I think these are Kentucky recruits, but uh Trey <laughs> Lyles, five star. Archie Goodwin, five star. That's a guard there, huh? Just a lot of bigs. He recruited uh Reed Shepard to uh he was the primary on Reed Shepard to Kentucky, but of course I think there's a connection there anyway. Uh, obviously Andre Curbello, great get, you know. Uh Kofi, RJ. He got uh, he was the primary on Andres Feliz from uh JUCO. Yeah, several, you know, solid job. He's been able to recruit to Illinois. He's been able to recruit to Kentucky. I mean, one's easier than the other, but he's done a good job. I would take him. I would take him in a heartbeat. He's Absolutely. got an East Coast connection, too. He's from the uh, the Bronx. Is there, is there any other names that you guys know of? I don't want to say if that Antigua, If Antigua wants <clears throat> to come back, then I think you do it. I think that's the – yeah, I think – him or nobody at this point. Tyler Underwood. Tyler, do you think Tyler Underwood gets a promotion? That was my biggest fear. No. Was Tyler Underwood was going to get a promotion? You don't. You don't bring in. Oh, Cohen from Xavier. You don't oh. bring in. Uh, you don't. You don't give Tyler like. There's no recruiting. Uh, 
there's no recruiting history there, right? So I don't want this Cohen guy. He stinks already. <laughs> Adam Cohen. What okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. What? Does Xavier have... What is... What, if you look at their website, is this like donation money to make it to where Adam Cohen is the Crawford family associate head coach and Sean Miller is the Settler family men's basketball head coach? Is that like a booster? What the hell is that? That's weird. <laughs> Crawford Family Associate Head Coach. What is that? I don't know. The hell Apparently is that? the Crawford family's paying them. The coaching jobs have sponsorships now. Not a sponsorship. I mean, that's, <laughs> it just seems like a sponsorship. I don't know. Uh, let's see. This guy, Adam Cohen. Uh, I guess he was at Stanford. Yes. Ooh, interesting. Harvard, Vanderbilt, Rice. Uh, yeah, this would be, I mean, given the recruiting history that I'm seeing here, I would definitely sign up for this. I mean, he got Zaire Williams and Harrison Ingram to go to Stanford. Like that's, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's two top twenties. So if he can do that, plus he's gotten some decent, uh, you know, 50 <clears throat> to a hundred guards. Uh, so sure. do you think that Illinois is going to get a step up? You think this is going to be beneficial? Yes, yeah. I, I don't think it's anything against Chester, but I just think that there may be some limitations there just to what, like, because, like, Chester is, you know, defense. He's a smaller guard. Yeah. Talking about him like he's playing still, but he's not. But just, <laughs> yeah, I think if you can just bring in a guy who who can also recruit, you know, Chester could recruit. It's just, you know, different way of going about it than maybe what Brad maybe wants, you know. I mean, Brad's a... Offensively, they've had some some uh, some good offensive players. So, I mean, you obviously need defense, but I think you can develop some of that stuff too. Yeah, but it's unfortunate for Sincere. You know, I thought there was a potential to make a leap this season, but if he wants to follow the guy who recruited him and he's not loyal to the program, he's not a team player. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, good luck to him. I don't know. I mean, only cares about himself. Nah, I I, I hope Sincere goes on and does great things. So. Yeah. Personally. Personally. All right. Sure. What else we got? Um, we got 30 minutes left. Which which recruits do you think who do you who else do you think will leave uh follow Chester? Or at least leave or follow leave with the opportunity to follow Chester. Uh honestly, I think Hansberry is the only one that I think would go. Follow it's Chester. weird that. It seems like there's Ty Rogers is on that list. Ty I'm Rogers saying. is a Tim Anderson guy. I know. I'm just saying. So your point makes no sense. So don't even make it. Um, <laughs> well, who else would I say? Well, I and was just going to say, like, asking, there's literally there already been, about Hansberry. You want me to throw out another name out there? Yes. I got uh, there hasn't there hasn't been a Luke Goody. <laughs> I feel like we haven't seen. There's a lot of talk about. Um, there's a lot of talk about more, more, uh, it's not what I was doing, more carnage, so to speak, of the, uh, of the program. Like these reports make it sound like several guys are leaving, which I doubt. Uh, and this is a good point by Gary, maybe his first ever. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Chester's totally in on developing three to four stars, which, yeah. yeah. And I don't think that we need that fully, you know? Not, not the way that Brad Underwood's doing things. No. Absolutely not. Um, I was going to look something up. Oh, yeah. Did you see the comment earlier about Marez Johnson? Can you go up to the comments? Oh, on yeah. What, what the hell is that? I don't want to hear that. Uh, that was way up there. Where was it? Who said it? Check it out. Any rumors about Marez leaving? No shot. We're way too far into this for that to happen. <laughs> I hope not. I don't know. I don't know. It, there's nothing there. There's no me. way that you stay committed for three years and then, and then you just leave. 
right now. Especially when it looks like the way things are trending right now, I mean, he's probably going to be starting or at least playing a, a heavy bench role. Yeah, and if he can have Antigua come in and coach him up a little bit. I mean, let's – can we – I don't know. because I you think I, Anti- was Antigua originally who was recruiting him? How long have those two been gone now? Four years? Five years? Doesn't seem like that long, but – it, it um, had to be within the last four because we talked about it on the podcast. So, twenty, yeah, obviously it hasn't been that long. Twenty twenty, I think it was after the, I think it was after the twenty one season, wasn't it, or twenty two? It was after the twenty one or twenty two season. Yeah, no, it was after the twenty two season, I think, because uh, Antigua recruited RJ, and. RJ didn't follow him because Kentucky obviously wouldn't want him. And uh <laughs> yeah, had to be had to be after the 22 season. No, 21 season. Had to be after the 21 season. Who do you think was in charge of his recruitment? Anybody know? Merez? Yeah. It doesn't list a primary, so I assume it was just like the Oh, just the another staff. young guy didn't hear anything. Piper just put in a crystal ball for Booth. All right. Jesus. Oh, that's a. You don't like him? Coleman Hawkins 2.0? You say that as if that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that. Um, why, did, why did I say it wasn't because bad? Because you said you don't like You him. are thinking that I'm thinking. You don't. That it's no. A bad thing. You said, here's, here's how, how, how that went. Here's how that went. Here's how that went. Uh, you don't like him? Coleman Hawkins 2.0? Like those things are connected. No. You think no, that me not like him makes me think that he's Coleman? No, it's, it's stupid. Um, I mean, there's talent there. Better obviously. offense, worse defense than Coleman Hawkins. There's talent there. Obviously, you know he's a he's a four star transfer according to two four seven. He's a four star prospect. Uh, you need size. Like the the if Hansberry's gone, their only guy that's got real size is is two freshmen. Is Merez going to be playing the five? I wouldn't think so. I would – they I, – I wish that Raynod from, from Stanford didn't didn't leave or didn't stay Day. at Stanford, yeah. yeah, which that sucks. But I have to watch more about Booth. I mean, obviously, they, they went after him pretty hard, so it's got to be something there. Remember, this guy uh, committed to Penn State. Um, so he's a Shrewsbury guy, basically, is the idea. So – uh, yeah. I think Illinois is going to look really weird this year, just the way they play. I think it might be weird. The way this roster is being filled out, it's – I don't know. I don't know if it's the best thing, but really? I, obviously we have to trust Brad. Yeah, I'd like to see the finished product, obviously. But um, Booth, I mean, he shot at 29% from three, but he took 118 of them. You have to think that can develop. Uh, 54% around the rim, 40 of 74, that's, that's fine. Uh, didn't play like a ton of – like he played, you know, 20 plus in several games for Notre Dame, but you know, this is also a, a bad Notre Dame team. He's young. Uh, obviously he's got some more of an NBA uh, pedigree in terms of the fact that his, his dad is an NBA GM. Uh, so there's something there basketball, hopefully a high IQ guy, given the fact that, you know, if you're, if you have a parent who's running an NBA team that just won a championship last year, I feel like that's a good thing. Uh, I'm willing to, to really talk myself into this one being good, uh, but obviously, you know, you're 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 collecting talent and then you're trying to figure out a way to put it together. And I think we could probably pencil him in right now as like as a as a guy who's gonna play some decent minutes for this team. They're gonna really try to develop him. And this is another reason why bringing in Antigua would be great to develop these these guys. And and if it's not Antigua, then you bring in the other fella and you 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 you, you know, I don't I don't know who's working with the bigs now, but yeah, so and Booth's best game was probably, I mean, against actual opponents, was probably against Virginia. He went six That's of an nine. That's an actual opponent? Two for five from three. Uh, 17 points, nine rebounds, two steals, two turnovers. He took nine threes against Wake Forest this year. So... Remember when he was brought up a couple weeks ago, I mentioned how the scouting report on him was that he'd be more of a project, which yeah. is what confuses me about why Illinois would want him, I guess. That's right? 
Like, uh, hey, hey, Brad, figure it out. He's visiting Colorado State next. He's from Colorado, so could go back home. Well, if you want me to bring up another Latula point here, since they say Booth is long-term play, they're bringing in a lot of guys with multiple years left, and I think that's part right. of the point that he made was that you know continuity still wins. So I think that's that's a good strategy, especially when you're coming off a year where, yes, you got to the Elite Eight, you went kind of all in for one year, and, and it worked out. And, you know, you, you got a lot of guys leaving. Now you want to – you can't just keep doing that every year. Like, that's hard to sustain. Yeah. So I think it, it makes sense that, you know, you bring in – Jake Davis has three years left. Trey White, I think, has two, right? Yep, yep. Booth has three. Uh, Boswell, Boswell has, two. has two. So, yeah. The only guy right now that they're – Maddox is his, this would – he'd be a one and done, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think the Maddox thing is happening, by the way. I think I really? think he's going to go elsewhere, yeah. Uh, I'm watching a little bit of Booth off to the side here, and I'll tell you this right now. He shoots it kind of like a guard, so that's interesting. Pretty fluid motion. Yeah, Coleman Hawkins 2.0. He's got a way better, way so better looking motion than Coleman, I think. <laughs> I think this is a, an untapped potential guy. I think you could get a lot out of him if, if it works out. Bootsilla says we need a five. Don't feel comfortable with that one. Get Maddox in a five and let's go. They might. We, I mean, we might be trending towards five out offense again, right? <laughs> I mean, the guys we got right now, it definitely looks like a five out. Hey, it worked last year, and you got length. I mean, you got length. I mean, if you if you if for like. The one real concern, I still think there's a lot of time left in terms of additions and subtractions with the roster, but if you're playing Merez at the four and uh, and Booth at the five, you're really young, but you're also gigantic. You're also, you know, similar to, I yeah. think it's Quincy and Coleman with maybe more potential if they played multiple years together. And the, I guess the, the downside to Maddox, which great shooter, but he's like 6'2 also, right? So you'd have Boswell – and Maddox both 6'2 in the guard position. But I think you're okay with that if those guys are as good offensively as we think. And right. And do like there's more that they like when when the when the backcourt was Frazier Plummer in 22, I think there were limitations to the way that those guys could score. Like Plummer was basically just a three-point shooter and like a he could make baseline jumpers. And then Frazier obviously could could shoot threes and and kind of go at the rim. Like Boswell can distribute, you know, shot it well from three to Arizona. These are both high talent guys. So that's the the thing. Like Frazier was a great player. And and you know, people will rag on the fact that people call him an Illini legend. I think that maybe we're a little bit a little liberal with the word legend. Uh, I think he's a very, very important piece to the history of the program, you know, similar to Io, like he wasn't as great as Io was here, but he was, you know, him and DeMonte were important in the sense that they, they stuck around. Stayed, yeah. But, uh, I mean, there's still a lot that's, I still think there's a lot that can happen. You know, it's still only mid April. Yeah. Schneidweiner, that's the thing. Like, I mean, you got to think that Illinois can fill both of those roles. Also, like, if we pulled out a coach. Like Coleman could better. still Coleman could still come back. Like that's not He's I don't think that's entirely ruled out. Probably not, but that would be interesting in the sense that you you play him at the five and then you maybe do Merez at the four and then have Booth off the bench. I don't know. Better than Dane Danger. So Yeah. It's like hard to look at the rotation right now and 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 see that, you know. Yeah, why don't you tell the play. people what you got down here? Well, I just had Boswell at the one. You can pencil him in. Yeah. Your second guard, I don't think you can pencil in. Everybody seems to think it's a guarantee that Ty Rogers starts. I think he'll start at the three or the four, whatever happens. Yeah. And then uh, as of right now, I don't see how you don't start Merez at the four and then just not know a center. Yeah. A lot of people are saying Goody could get a starting role in the two two guard spot. What do you think about that? No. You don't see that happening? You're okay. Can, can we just think about something for a second? That is not a good enough perimeter to contend. Come on. No. 
Rogers Goody, can't shoot. Goody Goody's can only an shoot always three. off the bench guy. He has to be. How is how how can people justify? Oh, Ty Rogers has to start, but then also say that Luke Goody should start too. Like, what the hell is that? What makes people think that's going to win enough games? Give me a break. Sure. That's just a stupid way to think. Uh, Hinkle says, copy the UConn formula. Find a five that can rim protect and go to the league. It's that simple. Yeah, easy. That's all you need. Uh, how do we stand with Maddox? Eric, I'm not sure. Ethan thinks that it's it's a done deal that he's not coming. So, Well, if you notice, I did write these things last night, and I said, store isn't happening. Maddox visited, but I don't think that's happening. And then I said, booth feels likely. Maddox was visiting today, I believe. So, whatever, it's not going to work. He's going to. Uh, Bootsilla said, uh, "Dane should have stayed." Don't yell at me, Ethan. Yeah, I mean, that's that's stupid, but sure. The team did not have confidence in Goody. I, I think Goody I just, got, some, got some late, like got some late run time. Okay, but we all like Goody, but there's no reason to start Goody and Rogers. That's literally so stupid. You think that's a pre- like if Goody starts next to Boswell, what the hell makes that a perimeter that's good enough to win? Come on, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Go look at the perimeters that win. It doesn't include a white guy who can only shoot threes. Maybe he gets a little game in him, a little Damask in him. I think you're better off if you're gonna. I think you're better off just going DGL and Boswell and being smaller. <laughs> like that's. I think you're better off with that. Okay. You have to have guys that can, you know, handle the ball, especially next to Boswell. Like, that would be – maybe not especially next to Boswell, but you don't want to have, like, 6-7, six, 6-7 seven, six, seven with Boswell, guys who don't do enough. Store might take his take-it-or-leave-it offer from Illinois. Goody can leave. If people still Why think A.J. Store, now? if people still think A.J. Store is coming to Illinois, I mean, wake up, folks. Wake up. Uh Goody is not one tenth of what Spencer is, but I would say Jake Davis is a better Cam Spencer type than Goody eventually. But Cam Spencer just makes like also have you guys seen like did you did you guys watch Cam Spencer in the tournament? Mm-hmm. Handle never gets sped up. Two feet makes mid-range jumpers, touch around the rim. Runs around like crazy, passing angles, and talks a ton of shit. That's not Luke Goody at all. Goody's a fine player, but you know, I don't know. Um, still a lot to figure out. Like we're gonna have to do another episode soon because this is. I mean, there's so much going on. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, too much going on. Honestly, like everybody, slow down. We should just do them like every time something's announced. Huh? What do you think about that? We could, yeah. I mean, I definitely know that the uh, other there's people out there that are doing that. Um, I also want to get to this last thing here. Uh, CBK report, well known for just trying to engagement farm, which we've been accused of before. Yeah, we're um, definitely farmers. Did any of us say that Luke is better than Cam? Well, Cheezang said Goody is our Cam Spencer. That's what he was referring to. The team around you makes everyone better. Spencer was forgettable at Rutgers. Hey, Hinkle, have you also, <laughs> to add on to your point, have you also thought about, hey, maybe uh, maybe Dan Hurley is a more creative offensive mind than Steve Peichel? Have you ever thought about that too? And maybe Bill Murray from the uh, hit film, uh, you know, Ghostbusters. Uh, yeah, well, that movie stinks. Um, and uh, that's just, a, just a terrible, yeah. Um, what? Uh, Groundhog's Day. Groundhog Day. There you go. Um, maybe his son also pretty good. So, yeah, I've heard that the assistants run that team. So, thank you, Ankle. Good job. Well, that's ridiculous, but yeah. Uh, CBK report ranking the Big Ten head coaches. Uh, interesting list. It's hard to rank them with the fact there's eight. There's eighteen. What is it? Ugh, ugh. I hate yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, number one, Painter. That's fine. I agree. Two, Izzo. I think we're probably a little bit past those days. He's probably in the three, four range. That's fine. I would agree. Yeah. Izzo was number two 20 years. He was number one 20 years ago. Good for you. Uh, he was also number two, like five, five years ago, but, yeah. or number one, five years ago, actually. Um, 
Musselman three, which I think is probably a bit much, you know, good coach though. Cronin four, both Musselman and Cronin obviously have very, you know, high levels of tournament success in recent years. But I think, you know, you kind of look at the players in, in those spots, like Cronin probably doesn't even touch the elite eight without Hawkes, or I guess it was a final four without Hawkes and, and Campbell, but you know, whatever. And, uh, Juzang, uh, Underwood five, Altman six, Dusty May seventh, Fran McCaffrey eighth. This is where I get confused. Like <laughs> guard ninth and Hoiberg tenth. Guard is not better than Hoiberg. He's not better than Collins. And he's not better than Pikele. He's probably not better than Sprinkley. Those are the next few. Yeah. Uh, Willard fourteenth, Rhodes fifteenth, Woodson sixteenth, Diebler seventeenth, Johnson eighteenth. Okay, if I had to re-rank these off the top of my head. I would probably say Painter is one. Hard not to put Underwood two, given his success in the Big Ten. Right. Two Big Ten tournaments. I think it's so hard to to rank guys that haven't played in the Big Ten, I would say. I mean, you can kind of, but it makes it makes I'm not gonna I'm not gonna re rank them, but I think I think Hoiberg, Collins, and Peichel are all better than guard to me. Uh, I also think Woodson is better than Rhodes and Willard. Um, and then I think Sprinkle could probably be up there a little more. I think a little, little overvaluing Musselman and Cronin. Uh, and I think. Why is Johnson getting so much hate? I mean, he's got to recruit people to come to Minnesota. Who wants to come to Minnesota? I mean, Richard Patino got him to a tournament. Huh? He got he got, he got Oturu and uh, you know Mashburn. Got some good players there. Christie last year. I was joking. <clears throat> yeah, Diebler, uh, good job from him in the portal so far. Michi Johnson obviously wanted to come back, and then uh, Aaron Bradshaw. I think there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. So Diebler's lucky because Cal wanted that job. Psh. True. Very true. Uh, yeah, there's probably too many teams in the Big Ten. I think that's probably a good take. Yeah, there's like 10 too many. And you go uh, back to the big eight. No. <laughs> it's going to be a mess, but getting rid of Zed Key was the best thing Diebler did. Yeah, Zed Key off to Dayton. Yikes. Good for him. <laughs> uh, Answer this question. Is guard better than Woodson? Um, I think it's a coin flip between those two, but I will go with yes. Uh, I definitely think Woodson's a better recruiter, but you're also recruiting Indiana, so it's a little different. Still a top tier, uh, true destination in terms of you know, oh, I played for Indiana, I wore the stupid pants. I'm just trying to watch some Carrie Booth film here, very exciting. Good release. I like the release. I mean, it's a little slow, I guess, but he's also 6'10. So dribble to the rim. Woo. He plays like a guard. So I think, yeah, I think we might be five outing again, right? Which, you know, I think that can still work with a real point guard. Yeah. I just think it'd, be, it'd be interesting if they had a real one and five. But I don't Jeffrey's know if Brad ever this. wants that again. I think Brad is. Has moved away. Is the Booth coming to Illinois for themselves? Uh, Derek Piper put in a crystal ball, according to Hinkle, I believe. And Derek Piper is usually pretty. Sp- he usually waits until he has confirmation. Um, so I would expect an announcement in the next two days. To be honest with you, Booth yeah. might have better ha- better handles than Coleman. Oh, I'm in. Tim Anderson has to be the highest paid assistant in the Big Ten. I uh yeah, I think if I had to rank the four editions so far by impact, I would I because I'm assuming Booth is gonna be here. Yeah. Uh number one, Kylan Boswell. Uh number two, Kerry Booth. All right, all right. After watching two minutes of uh, of some stuff on it. Uh, number Eric's, three, Eric's obviously obviously Jake Davis, number three, clearly. And wow. then Trey White, Good who I've always said is – Trey White, I've always said is great. Uh, he's fourth. But 
if if you say one thing that I'll take away from this offseason so far is that they're going to be lengthy again. Like Trey White, Jake Davis, both six above 6'6". Six, six. Booth is, is 6'10". So they're going to have length, athleticism. Uh, I still think this team, you know, on paper, shooting-wise, they got some shooters. If Goody can, can shoot it the way he did last season, Jake Davis we know can shoot it. Boswell can shoot it. Booth can shoot it. Marez probably, hopefully that translates to the, this level. I think this also sets up like pretty good roles with, with the where the guards are right now. I think it sets up opportunities for both DGL and Moretti to earn some time. Yeah. Um, I still think, like Eric said there, we need another guard. I still think they will pick up another guard. I don't think it's going to be the guard that people think. And uh, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to be relying on guys that have been here for a bit and you're going to be relying on some newer guys. So it'll be interesting. I mean, you got to trust Brad. You got to trust the assistants. I think the next episode we do will be centered around the assistant coaching addition, probably if that happens quickly and probably talk more about booth after watching more about booth. So uh, this is another good point. Yeah. Let's, let's go to uh Let's head uh, across the pond or whatever, you know, <laughs> head head overseas. For some, Hopefully for some they stuff. don't have to play with those terrible basketballs. That's true. But, you know, uh, one takeaway, that, there was three takeaways that I had from that trip when we watched that game. And number one was the three-point shooting would be fine. Everybody shut up and relax. <laughs> correct. Number two, rebounding. This team was going to be able to rebound the basketball. Mostly correct. Number three, I said they were going to be really good defensively. Incorrect. So I tried. So, so you had a correct, a mostly correct, and an incorrect. That's those are good numbers. Not bad. Good That's numbers. not bad. Better than all you bozos who said they wouldn't be able to shoot. <laughs> That's true. How That's about true. that? Oh, God, Man. they can't shoot with these shitty Italy balls. Oh, my God, with these <laughs> shitty rims, these shitty gyms. I mean, Engel said the balls are the same. He's been there. So good try. We all like Hinkle does not know ball at all. He, he please. <laughs> uh, I like good. He seems just underutilized their offense. Well, maybe, you know, I, I'd like to see them run some more stuff for guys like him and Davis or yeah. run anything, you know, anything. they might, Hey, they might run some stuff. They got a real point guard stand, to, to stand direct traffic. I, yeah, I'll say this. Looks. I think the current roster were trending towards less ISO ball. That could be exciting. That's true. Now, if Damask ends up somehow getting that waiver and coming back, you know, he could be a nice compliment next to Boswell. That would be exciting. Hinkle went 0 and 3. That's why he subscribes. Yeah, subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff. Appreciate you guys. I gotta get this ad read done because I got a phone call at three o'clock. <clears throat> Ethan, you can stay on here as long as you want talking to the fans. No. So. We're, we're right. done. <laughs> As always, we want to thank Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon at 700 East Broadway Avenue in Mattoon, Illinois. You can find them online at www.alamo-steakhouse.com. April specials. Uh, Tuesday, they got a chicken parmigiana. And Wednesday, they got a lemon peppered tilapia. So if you like some tilapia, go get you some from Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon. Thank you. Uh, if you guys would like to be a sponsor for our episodes or, or watch parties, you can reach out to us on Twitter or you can email us at Illini Basketball Podcast at gmail.com. Once again, like, subscribe, share, let your friends know that uh, we're the best basketball podcast there is out there. And uh, we will be back probably Friday or something at this rate. Probably, yeah, that's <laughs> probably true. So. All right, we'll see everybody uh, next time. Follow the Twitter at Podcast Line I, and uh, yeah, I don't have anything else, so goodbye.